Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Vibrato. You've heard it, you might know what it is, but how do you actually do it? There's a lot of theories out there on the best way to do it. Do you use your embouchure? Do you use the air? Do you wiggle the saxophone around? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to learn how to play vibrato on the saxophone. There's a corresponding PDF that goes along with this video. I reference it throughout the video and I want you to have it so you can follow along and practice with it. You can download that for free using the link at the top of the description below. It's also in the pinned comment. Without any further ado, here is the easiest way to learn vibrato on the saxophone. Vibrato is something that really adds a lot of warmth to your playing, and it's not only just for playing soft ballads. You can use vibrato in a bunch of different ways, which I'll show you in a second. But if you've ever heard maybe a singer using vibrato or an instrumentalist saxophonist using vibrato, it's gonna really make the sound sound a lot warmer. It's gonna make it not as stagnant. I just think it's gonna make certain notes sound much better. Here's what it sounds like if I just play the note F completely straight with no vibrato. Wonderful, it's fine. Now I'm gonna add some vibrato after playing the note straight for like a second or two, then I'm gonna add vibrato and see how it changes it. I hear the difference there. So I'm gonna teach you how to literally do that on the saxophone, and then you could take that technique and use it in many different ways. If you wanna do a fast vibrato, a slow vibrato, soft, you know, anything you want, but I'm gonna teach you the actual physical way to do it. So I'm gonna use the note F with the octave key on the saxophone. Once again, I'm playing alto, but you can do this on whatever saxophone you want. You could really do this on any note you want as well. I'm just picking a note that's right in the middle range. I think it's a good note. F's a good note to start on because it's not too low, it's not too high. It's just kind of right in the middle. It just feels really comfortable. So just like it says on the PDF, the first thing you do is just play in tune. And that's the idea here is always start with an in tune, good quality sound. So I'm just gonna play that first F, just straight sound. Great. Now I'm gonna try to bend the note down a half of a step, but keep the fingering the same. Okay, now here's where we get into the physical, technical nature of this. You don't actually have to bend it all the way down a half step because your vibrato is not a half step. A half step vibrato would be Right, that sounds ridiculous. What we're doing here though is working the muscles of your mouth to get this sound. Basically what you're gonna do is, the easiest way for me is to say E or aw. So you should be starting with aw anyway, right? Your nice aw sound. So if you say E aw, you get to that point, but you can go further with aw, aw, and lower even more. So do that without the instrument first. Just say aw, 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 Feel what that feels like. Then go aww and lower it as far as you can. Aww. Aww. Right? It's ridiculous and it's really ridiculous me doing it into a camera. But if you feel ridiculous at home, just don't film yourself, right? Say aww. Not e aww as much, but it's the same process going from e to aww as it is from aww to aww. So what's happening is you're pulling everything down away from the reed. If you're having trouble bending the note and you're scared of the note being lost, actually let it go completely lost. Play the note F and let it bend until the note stops completely. Right, let that happen. Now, see if you can just get the half step. If you want to play E so you hear what a half step is, you can do that. Until you feel comfortable being able to drop the jaw. Now, that half step thing, once again, is the exercise. You are not going to be using this half step, a full half step, as your vibrato. Okay, so if you do that, and somebody says, why do you sound like that? Don't say, hey, Dave Pollock told me to do it. I did not, okay? This is just for the exercise to train you how to really identify these muscles. So in the PDF, as it says, you're gonna try to bend down a half step, but then bend down and then back up. You notice I put a fermata over each one because we're not in time yet. I want you to just take your time with this. There's no metronome, there's no nothing. You're just trying to get the motion here and the bending of the pitch. So I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go from F to E back up to F just using my embouchure. And the goal is have the first F and the second F 
be perfectly in tune the same, the middle note, that E that we're shooting for in this case, is gonna be the one that's lower. Once you're able to bend it down like that out of time, then you're ready to jump into trying to do it in time. So as you see on the second line, I wrote bend down and back up in time. So I wrote for this line, half notes. So I wrote quarter note equals 90 just because that's what I'm gonna be demonstrating here. But you can do any tempo you want really. This is a nice comfortable tempo to start out with, especially if you kind of peek ahead at what we're about to do. So here we go. I'm gonna to try to bend the F down to the E in half notes at quarter note equals 90. What you don't wanna do is when you come back up to F, squeeze too much. If you get this sound, that means you're overcompensating when you come back up. So what you could do is take a tuner again. Once you get the first F in tune, know that you're gonna drop your jaw to go down to the E, if you're using the notes F and E. And then when you get back up to F, really look at the tuner. When you drop down the half step, if it's not a perfect half step, that's okay. Okay, some people might tell you you have to get it perfectly in tune. I'm not saying that because the vibrato, once again, is not gonna be a full half step. So, you know, you don't have to make it perfectly in tune with the E dropping down half step, just as long as it drops roughly a half step. I don't, I don't care. Mine's not perfect either. It's totally fine. So now, as you see, once we do half steps, now we're gonna do quarter notes. And as you hopefully are hearing, I'm slurring everything. I'm not tonguing it. I'm not trying to drop the jaw or something and tongue the note. I'm just using my embouchure to just make sure that pitch goes down and back up. Now we're gonna do quarter note triplets. So that's gonna be six notes in each measure instead of four. Now it's starting to sound like something. When it's slower, it's just really a hard exercise, but now it's starting to move a little bit. So now let's do eighth notes. And remember, these are straight eighth notes. So you notice my E when I drop down is not perfect, but the goal is to be consistent with the top note. That's the key to vibrato. Make sure whatever actual note you're playing is consistent. So if you're bouncing around from that, whether you do a wider vibrato or just a, a small vibrato, depending on how much you drop your tongue, the pitch, the actual note is still in tune. If you play the note F, but your vibrato, right, that, that, that doesn't, you know, that's probably not what you're going for. If it is, that's fine. You know, I'm not, I'm not judging. But if you're just trying to play the note F with vibrato, you have to make sure the actual pitch you're trying to play is consistent. So now we just did eighth notes. Now let's do some eighth note triplets. Now it's getting faster. Okay, and really try to keep them in time. Really try to do it as triplets, as eighth notes. Don't just wildly do it because then you're skipping this process. The idea of this is that I'm teaching you this way. You have the patience to go through this and it will pay off and it'll be more efficient and you'll save time in the long run. So finally, we're gonna do 16th notes. So now it's gonna be four notes for every single beat and you're gonna be moving pretty quick now. Here we go. Okay, it almost sounds like a vibrato now. It's still an exercise. I still wouldn't play vibrato like that. But if you can do that, if you can do what I just did, now you have the physical control to do whatever type of vibrato you want. So when I say type of vibrato, you can do a more like classical type of vibrato where you start the note straight, you do some vibrato and then straighten it out.
there's that. You could do a really fast vibrato at the end of a note, a la Richie Cole, one of my favorite alto players, favorite musicians of all time, who I got the chance to you know, learn from, uh, hang out with a bit, and uh, he was a great soul. And uh, But Richie really did this thing at the end of notes where he would rip off the end of a note with a really fast vibrato. <laughs> It's a very funny thing. It's like a physical motion too. So that's one type of vibrato. Then you could do maybe a more bluesy, schmaltzy, even um, ballad type of vibrato. Like if I'm playing Stars Fall in Alabama, for example, it might be a little wider, it might be a little slower. <laughs> Here, that one's wider. Da ya 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 ya. Not da ya 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 and not da wa. So there's different types of vibrato, but the physical nature is the same for all of them. I'm starting on one pitch, and that's my main pitch, and I'm just opening up slightly and pulling back to that note. The idea when you keep it consistent, the actual note you're on, you hear the vibrato. You don't really hear pitch changing. It doesn't sound like multiple notes. All you're hearing is the one steady pitch with a vibration, a vibrato on the note. All right, I hope this video opened your eyes and shed some light on how to actually play vibrato on the saxophone. Let me know in the comments down below if this was helpful for you, and also let me know if you learned a different way. I'd love to hear about it. Don't forget to download that PDF that goes along with this video. It's completely free, and you can find that link in the top of the description down below, and I'll also put it in the pinned comment under this video. Let me know what other saxophone topics you wanna see me discuss here. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.